Welcome again to my allotment in East Sussex for the third and fourth week of May 2019. These are the clips I left out in my first upload as to include them would have made the video too long. Furthermore, the work in progress of race bed 14 I thought had become disjointed so as a record of events for diary purposes and interest for viewers, I have put the clips together in chronological order. Re reduced level digging can be a daunting task and I start by digging a trench, loading up the barrow and carting the spoil to the opposite end. Having a rest and then filling the trench with a downward action as one walks backwards. For me, this cuts down the hard graft of muck shifting. The salt of my right is ignored, lining myself up with the bed in front, keeping the soil roughly level with the, that of the path in front, all ready for fixing the sides of the raised bed timbers. Raised bed timbers laid in position, squared up and levelled, a temporary peg hammered in to stop any movement, the soil inside the bed levelled and then the soil on the outside can be excavated using the fixed bed timbers as a guide. To recap the theory behind what I have achieved to date is to level the majority of my plot which was a sloping site. Textbooks say position the plants or beds north to south. I don't know if that is correct or not. What I do know is plants at the south end of my beds do better than those at the north end. And this will be more even if the bed sloped south up to north, but mine slopes the other way, south down to north. Stepping the beds does not help. My best solution is to level the site by using an old surveyor's trick of establishing the cut and fill line. This is how they did it in the olden days, before heavy machinery was invented. Where there was hordes of labourers or slaves with shovels. But I'm on my Jack Jones, a one-man band. Timber frame in position, the earth contained can be levelled and the pass around the perimeter levelled and deposited into the raised bed. But when I arrive on the plot, I walk around, see what's different what's been damaged, for example the strawberries, an inspection showed fruits appearing. So must direct some protection and do it now, not later. Hoops in position, it's out with the bird netting, giving the fruits their necessary protection. Here I'm clearing the soil from around the base of the onions prior to watering and giving space for the bulbs to swell into. Watering is a time taking task as is searching for bindweed. A fellow plot holder comes up and says, Hi Mike, check your broad beans lately. Yeah, why? Well, mine have got black fly. I've come to see if yours have. Okay, let's take a close look. I did have some pest control mixture in the polytunnel purchased last year when I, which I used on my broccoli after my cauliflowers were decimated by caterpillars. So I decided I'll give that a go. I sprayed the beans, I had plenty in the spray, so I did my cabbages, and my neighbor also sprayed his beans. The instructions say, another spray in a couple of weeks should resolve the situation. So we'll judge the value of the tra treatment then. And a reminder has been set for the 2nd of June, which, is the end of my diary for the fifth week of May. Adam of Allotment Grow How commented on his latest upload about the extent of volunteers and I've got to say that I've had a glut of volunteers this year. Bed 11 is a special case. To improve the worm population I buried kitchen waste some three months back in a deep trench centre of the bed. Worms are okay. Lesson learnt. Do not include potato peelings. As stated in the intro, the actual 
order I do my jobs is not in chronological order and I try to keep my visits to two hours a day and I don't get opportunity at times to film the odd tasks such as sowing the parsnips, the peas or the celeriac. Other tasks such as the dog kennel get ignored but I did manage a couple of hours progressing this project this week. This gives opportunity to mention an observation made by subscriber Joyce of What I Grow NL Allotment. From her plot in the Netherlands, Joyce has produced some well put together uploads, easy on the eye and entertaining to watch. Why not have a look? And if to your liking, subscribe. Joyce asked, why do I use nails instead of screws for my raised beds? Well, for the roof, and because I'm using pallet wood, secured to pallet wood frames, hammering has a tendency to split a host of knots, etc. The problem with joints and fixing some external work is the swelling and shrinkage of timber due to the change in moisture content caused by the weather. If secured rigidly, tension builds up, resulting in splitting. This is resolved by creating a slot, not a hole. Three bits have been broken already by waggling the bit, so I tend to rotate the bit, accentuating on a horizontal movement. This is as far as I have got today, and this week. Until we meet again, it is time for me once again to leave you and hope you enjoyed this week's recorded diary. If you did, a thumbs up would be nice and please don't forget to press the bell. I also take the opportunity to welcome some new subscribers and ask them to make a comment or ask a question. Comments make producing the videos worthwhile. So, till next time, Take care and bye.